Este es Salvador Dalí, perverso, polimorfo, anarquista, surrealista, excelso, divino, déspota supremo que rompe con todo, el Dalí poseído de un delirio furiosamente dionisíaco, el Dalí ávido de dólares, el y Dalí... en exuso y monárquico. Y por encima de todas las cosas, como siempre ha dicho, y se ha autoproclamado monárquico. Pero no políticamente, metafísicamente. The Dali Museum in St. Petersburg has been called the most comprehensive museum of Dali in the world. Uh, it was started in 1982 and grows out of a phenomenal uh, private collection collected by uh, some American Midwest industrialists, Eleanor and Reynolds Morse. I grew up with the collection that my parents amassed uh, in the house uh, in Beechwood in the uh, 40s and 50s and 60s before they, they finally moved the collection down here. This collection consists of about a hundred paintings and then drawings, uh, sculptures, illustrated books amounting to another 2,000 works. Our store is a very commercial endeavor. Our visitors enter through the store, uh, they have their wonderful docented tour of the collection and then they exit through the store, hopefully. Uh, and in this way, they're able to buy something and actually extend their experience of the artwork past the walls of the museum. Dali would love that. Years back, he produced a, a print that was sold at Sears Roebuck. And he, he thought that was the greatest thing because it was his art going to the masses. He loved commerce. He, loved, he would have loved the idea of uh, people buying his works. He loved attention. And it was so easy to do antics and get attention. And guess what? As a fringe benefit, <laughs> I'm going to call it a pure luck fringe benefit, it turned out to be a brilliant marketing strategy. When Dolly would um, do something, it always seemed to catch some press. So a lot of the advertising companies liked that idea. First, it dissolves. Happy bubbles, but devoted bubbles. Then the alka seltzer shoots into the stomach. Here, he neutralizes that bad excess acid. He was different than a lot of his other surrealists in that he was uh, more flamboyant and more aggressive that way than some of the others. You know, kind of came from a, a different school of thought that, as Bertone put it, Avita Dollars was how he anagrammed Dolly's name because he was always looking for money. But he prospered and continued on, where a lot of the other ones, you know, didn't continue on after that. I think there was an era uh, when being highly successful as an artist made you suspect, uh, made your art suspect. His reaction to his critics, um, he probably didn't really give, <laughs> care about, you know, what they, their reaction was. When I was going through school, we were not shown Dolly. He was not part of the canon. Yes, we would buy posters, we could find his images, but largely he was not part of the serious discussion of values, which is what constitutes serious art. I think that has changed. Dali has been reintroduced into the canon of the dozen or two dozen most important artists of our era. People understand that uh, having financial rewards may be directly relational to the value of what you're producing. Dali um, has shown us that that's true. He loved doing these crazy things anyway. He loved the attention he got from doing them. And now everybody knows about Dali and they're interested in his art. It's like win, 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 win. There's no loss there. Mm -hmm.